Hey everybody, hang on. I'm 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 going live on uh, on Clubhouse. I'm a little a little backed up, but welcome to Herb Talk. If you're just following us, and good morning, everybody. So I am now. Um, Going to invite Anne, my friend Anne. Let's see whether she's. Good morning, Anne. How are you? I don't know. Did I get you? If you don't want to speak, that's fine. Um, oh, there you are. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing okay. How about yourself? Well, just trying to get everything going. Um, getting organized. Teresa. Yeah, I see her. I just got to. I got to uh, get her. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh, I got to bake her moderator. How come she's not coming up as moderator? Invite to speak. Hey, Hello. good morning. Now, did I? There we go. Okay. So, good morning, ladies. How are you? <clears throat> And we're talking, it's another beautiful Sunday. How's your week going, Ann? Excuse me, I'm going to have to cough here for a second. <clears throat> I got the morning crud. My is doing okay. Yes. That I, I uh, met up with a friend. We haven't seen each other since last September. Mm. And we went to an Italian restaurant. So it was... It was good. I had tiramisu for dessert last night. Nice. I, I, <laughs> I like I tiramisu. Had a, a pasta that I wasn't familiar with, and then he said that it looks it's similar to linguine, so with mushrooms and various kind of mushrooms, and it was delicious. So nice. Yeah. You got your your My thing is to keep up with. Uh, you know, friends, and I really miss the, you know, sitting down, being served. You don't have to do the dishes. You don't have to prepare, and it's it's really good because the the whole the whole past year during the pandemic, you know, I, my cooking skill improved. <laughs> I think all of ours have. <laughs> It's nice to go and enjoy a nice meal with friends. Yes. Yeah, I am. Um, I I got lazy. I got uh, with Katie and I. Um, we I ended up signing up for one of those mailing subscriptions where they, you know, your all your stuff comes in a box and you just put it. Um, and then helpful because. Uh, I hate groceries. I hate shop. I'm not a shopper. I'm just, I'm not, I do not enjoy the hunt um, of looking for stuff. And I know in some brick and mortar stores, uh, they only can hold so much stuff. And of course, it's always the, the wrong size. I, I can only order it online. Um, it's not, they don't have it in the store. And uh, so I, uh, I just, shopping is just not my thing. I'll do it online. And if I have to return it, I return it. So, well, yeah, I'm getting my groceries mailed to me. <laughs> if I can't grow it, I just mail it. <laughs> I think a lot of us were doing that, you know, during the pandemic. And I find that it's actually not too bad. And I ordered from various places. And there's a lot of groceries mm -hmm. are available to order online. And you can either have it delivered to you. Or there's this is since I'm in the e commerce business and this BOPIS, B O P I S, buy online, pick up in store. Oh. And this business model seems to be working very well. And even the Safeway, the supermarket mm -hmm. here, and various places have now set up on um, their parking lot mm -hmm. and they designated some parking spaces where you can park there. It's contactless, 
So you called in, and then the employee of the they will come out and deliver groceries in your trunk、mm-hmm. and without any physical contact with you know people to people contact. I think it's a so, great service, honestly. Whoever came up with that model,、um, I that's how I prefer. I、uh, occasionally I'll go in,、um, but with the pandemic, I we just couldn't risk. Um, getting getting exposed, and you know, there's some some people in、uh, in my town. I like I had to go into CVS to get a prescription for my daughter because she、um, was sick. And some woman came walking in. She didn't have a mask. She didn't care. She was looking for a fight. It was clear she was waiting for somebody to just you know say something to her. She was gonna let them have it. I don't have time for that kind of stuff. You know, if you want to be a, a jerk, be a jerk someplace else, not in my space. So I, I was happy to get out of there.、Um, so、uh, yeah, I I just I just don't you know, businesses are not going to enforce some of their their policies. Then I'll take my my money elsewhere. You know, whatever. So cancel the cult cancel culture. But anyway. We're here. We're not talking about politics. We're here to、um, to talk about、um, pests. And Teresa is going to be in and out. She has a family commitment this morning, so Anne is just going to be you and I, and whoever else joins us.、Um, I'm also live on YouTube as well.、Uh, so today, Anne, is your garden going well? Is it? Uh, do you have any garden pests that are bothering you? Ours are starting to come out. Yes, there's a lot of <laughs> snails,、mm. and we have birds that they're eating our loquats and、mm. fruits. But what can I do? Squirrels? Yeah. My sister-in-law, she's got a a loquat tree, I think. And she <laughs> she goes out there with her broom. <laughs> she pats the thing. <laughs> like just let them have it, okay? You pick what you want, but apparently they're they they go after the really ripe ones. So you're not swatting your your squirrels with brooms, are you? No, no. <laughs> My mom says, "Well, they need to eat anyway, so we'll share."、Mm. <laughs> And、uh, it is harvest season right now, so we have quite a few loquats,、mm-hmm. and I'm share. I've been sharing that with friends and family. Yeah, some of the farmers in our area, we have a large deer population in、um, down in the in the meadows area, which is a part.、Um, it runs along the part of the Connecticut River, and I used to lease land down there、uh, years ago, and they would set off、uh, cannons. And it was、um, just scared the deer because the deer were just mowing through the corn, eating everything.、Um, and when you got that much, I mean, there was there's tons of acreage down there. When you've got when you got to set up cannons to set off、um, periodically during the growing season, that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of deer that they have to go to that. And they also allow the local hunting club to come in there. And try and weed out、uh, some of the some of the deer during hunting season, but here on our property, we have other. We do have deer, <clears throat> and I have a couple of things. Do you have bunnies? Issues with bunnies eating your stuff? Fortunately, I don't. I don't have bunnies. <coughs> I don't. I.、Uh, Where I live, it's I don't I'm not near the mountains or、uh, places where I see wild animals. But my brother, his home is in the woods,、mm-hmm. so he doesn't. And when he moved into that neighborhood, the neighbor neighbors were telling him, "Don't plant anything with flowers, because if you do, they have wild turkeys and、mm-hmm. and also."、Uh, Deers, and they will eat your all your f- petals and flowers and things like that. So they were told not to plant anything with. Well, there's、uh, some things that with- they can plant. They can. <clears throat> they won't eat everything.、Um, we have we have a large deer population,、um, and we have flowers everywhere. And the deer the deer don't eat them.、Um, <clears throat> but I have a remedy. If you want to have 
deer in your yard or flowers in your yard. I have I have something for you that we've been using for several years. Um, <clears throat> depending on how <laughs> how strong you want to make it um, will depend on on your choice, but it's it's certainly easy to do. So <clears throat> I have we have um, some of the top ten in our yard is deer, gophers, bunnies. Um, then we have, I have, um, slugs. We have, um, we have, yeah, we have turkeys too, but they pretty much stay in the woods. They don't, they don't come around here too much. I don't mind them. In fact, I like the, the, the wild turkeys to come down. Uh, we have grass in the front yard. They eat the ticks. So I try and encourage, um, those guys to come down that the turk wild turkeys are great for for eating the ticks out of the grass so i don't want to i don't want to deter them um <clears throat> but we have you know slugs and pill bugs um we have uh, aphids uh so these are all the, the the regular garden variety pests that we have um and then we have you know the tomatoes the hornworms um, that also eat the, eat the tomatoes and the chipmunks. Now my chipmunks, um, those little boogers, they, <clears throat> they do a lot of damage. I have just, just beyond me is our, our patio here. And, um, I had pots of flowers that I had set out last year. And those guys dug into the, the pots and they ate the roots and they were eating whatever, what else that they were. They were also storing their, their, uh, their seeds, that they were collecting. We, I happened to be um, feeding, was I feeding the, the birds at that point? Eventually I stopped feeding the birds uh, because we have bears that come through. Uh, oh, that's the other thing, bears, we've got bears um, <clears throat> that come through the yard. And um, so they were storing, I didn't want the bears to come ripping apart everything. So I ended up stopping, but they, yeah, they made their little houses. They were, they destroyed my pots last year. I don't know if I'm going to do them again this year because it's just not worth the mess. But <clears throat> so we have white flies, worms, tomato horn worms, wasps. So I create this, um, Teresa, you're back. You want to, uh, you want to join us? Um, yeah, I'll listen for a little bit. I had to pop in and out, but um, it's nice to be back. Wonderful. <clears throat> so I'm just kind of getting started with, with some of the garden pests that we have in our yard. Um, so we have, um, one of the things that I like to do is I like to create, um, there's this book that I got years ago and it's, I really, I can, can't uh, recommend it um, enough. It's called Biodynamic Gardening, Grow Healthy Plants and Amazing Produce with the Help of the Moon and Nature Cycles. But within this book, they have recipes on how to, for a natural uh, garden pest deterrence. And I've tried a couple of the recipes. Now, bio, biodynamic gardening <clears throat> tends to be, yes, you, you garden by the moon cycles, um, but it, um, it also has other, other things. I find it to be, you know, finding some of the ingredients for some of these uh, recipes, like, you know, the horns of animals they, they ask for. It tends to be a little, a little too much for me. But the one recipe that I do find interesting is the, the beer, or the beer, beer. You can say what I'm, I'm I'd like a beer. <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> deer, deer deterrence is I make this, this little, um, recipe and all it is, is water and garlic and hot peppers. And if you've got a, um, high speed blender or a juicer, I will add, I will, you know, make a cup. So if you're watching me on YouTube, I'm showing this in my, in the video. So it's just, uh, I made this up last night because my neighbor texted me and said the deer, the deer are coming over to our yard. And um, 
Paul's been working really hard on uh, the yard these past few months, getting ready for the uh, garden tour that we're going to have. We're, we're participating in a fundraiser for the um, the uh, historical society, and so we're going to have we're on the tour, and we don't want the deer eating Paul's hostas. And they will just come all the way down from the woods to the to the back of the house, and they'll just mow everything over. So I made this up last night, and it's hot peppers. It's a clove of garlic and water, and then you put it you put it in a high speed blender because you obviously you don't want the chunks, and you blend this down enough where it's a thin liquid, and then if you really want to supercharge this thing and you've got somebody who's willing to do it collect your your urine and add it to your recipe and then stick that in your bottle and you spray your garden and we have been doing this for years and it has been absolutely a wonderful uh, way to deter the deer from coming through and just mowing everything over. And it's that simple. Any questions? Are you guys totally grossed out? <laughs> no, I'm curious. Uh, <clears throat> the recipe, you mentioned cloves of garlic. A whole, a whole bulb of garlic. I'll chop up a whole uh, bulb of garlic. I'll make it super strong. Okay, so you need to t remove the skin. I don't and then chop it up or blend it. I just with... I don't remove the skins. I'll leave them on. Oh, so, you leave them on. Yeah, I just Got leave it. them on. I mean, why bother? You're not cooking with it. So if it's, if your blender can handle, I mean, we're talking a high about a high speed, you know, Vitamix, one of those really high speed uh, blenders. Yeah, I just leave it on. I don't bother. So it's garlic water. Mm -hmm. Chili pepper and urine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the ratio of these ingredients? Um, there really is is enough to make it make your your bottle. So I really don't I don't worry about it. Um, I don't put the obviously I I add the urine later. I don't put that in my blender. Um, I add that later. But no, I just I just blend enough to make it liquid where it'll go through a a spray bottle you know a real a regular spray bottle that i bought on off of amazon these little spray bottles so that's we have go ahead sorry uh we have a a japanese uh similar to dollar store mm -hmm. and you can get the plastic bottle for dollar fifty mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> so it, it just a cheap bottle. I mean, obviously, you're not going to use it for anything else. It's, I mean, Paul has one of those little gallon hand sprayers that he, you know, he bought at a big box store that has a wand. So he'll, he'll, uh, I'll make enough of this and he'll take a whole, you know, quart container, plastic container. This is like a deli container that I'm showing um, on YouTube. And he'll just, I'll fill that up with more water and then I about a, a cup of urine to the to the gallon sprayer. Again, don't don't put the urine in your blender. Just you you do the hot peppers and the garlic clove, you know, and I basically it's whatever I have on hand. Um, I happen to have several garlic uh, hot peppers left over uh, from one of my recipes, and so it was it was getting gross. So I I just tossed that in. But the hotter the pepper, you know, if you don't have hot peppers, you can use cayenne pepper. It's just you want to grind it up enough to be liquidy to be able to uh, to get it through the sprayer. Got it. Okay, I'll give that a try. Yeah. And so aside from deterring deers, does this recipe work on any other pests? Well, <clears throat> the uh, well, if you yeah, bunnies, any any four legged critter, this will work because when they eat when they eat it, as it'll taste disgusting. I mean, one of the 
the um, many remedies that we've tried here in the last 26 years that we've lived here. We used to hang, you know, Irish spring soap around the yard and um, to get the deer. Because at one time we had like a herd of deer. We had like 20 deer coming through our yard and just grazing. And um, that, did, that didn't work. And then I tried blood. I added, uh, you could buy powdered blood. I don't know if it's pig's blood. I don't know. You can get them at a garden store and you can sprinkle it around. Um, and that worked for a while. The, the thing is, is you want to rotate some of your, your remedies through, through your yard. So the deer don't get used to it, but we have found the urine, the hot peppers and the, um, the garlic to be the best, uh, organic pest deterrent um around the soap didn't really work once it rains that's it you gotta you, you know it, after a while the deer get used to the set and they know that there's um nothing's gonna happen to them um we've tried the owls we've tried you know the, the reflecting pans um you know we've what else have we tried we tried the automatic sprinkler where when they walk through you know it triggers the sprinkler that doesn't work um, this has really been the only one that I found that has worked well. Coyote urine, that was the other thing. You could buy coyote urine. I mean, if you're going to buy coyote urine, save your money. Just, if you got a little boy who likes to do that sort of thing, you know, just have him do his thing. You know, I mean, it's gross. But, you know, just add the urine to your, to your little, to your little container and, and you're good. Now for um, moss. There's a couple of things for moss. Um, for slugs. Um, yeah, this one here, um, this also works if you want to do a garlic, um, according to this book, Biodynamics. Uh, garlic also uh, deters aphids, moss, snails, and slugs. And they're suggesting two crushed garlics cloves macerated in olive oil for two days. And then uh, you decant the oil into a bottle of warm water to emulsify out the garlic and shake well. So I've tried that one and that worked well. So you could do a garlic oil, olive oil uh, infusion and then uh, spray that on your plants to get rid of the, the moths and the aphids. Um, another recipe I've tried for aphids, flying insects, and white flies has been mint. And they're suggesting you take mint and you chop it and you add it to one and three quarters pints or one liter of water. And you bring that to a gentle boil, and then you pour off the water, and um, you soak. Let's see here. And then you just kind of pour it on your plants. You spritz it on your plants. Obviously, you got to wait till the water cools off. Um, and you just add it to your tea plants. That's worked well. For slugs, I've tried. I've tried this. You have a, Teresa, you want to talk? Yeah, I had a quick question. How often do you do this? Because the moths are a huge, huge pain for me. Yeah, they are for me. Um, you, you, I would do it every couple times uh, a week, especially after a rain. You want to let the leaves dry a little bit. Um, I do it in the morning. I go out and I spritz. Like I, I plant it. Um, uh, squash you know zucchini and we have pill bugs coming through and um that's another that's a different remedy that i used and i went out there after that big heavy rain we had last week um i went out there and i spritz i spritzed them 
so uh, hi, I just want to reset the room here since we have a new listener. I'm Brenda Sullivan. I'm an herbalist. I'm in Connecticut. I'm here with um, my co-host, Teresa and Anne. She'll be, Teresa will be in and out. She's got family obligations, but we're here talking about pest control using herbs. I'm also live on YouTube as well under or, um, the uh, Living and Loving Herbs podcast channel. And so we're just talking about different ways to um, use herbs and repelling pests. So we're talking about just right now slugs. If you'd like to comment or rate, please feel free to raise your hand if you'd like to come up and talk. Um, no, no pressure here. Um, so the other thing that I use around some of my plants that I have found helpful is uh, crushing eggshells. I would collect, I eat a lot of eggs in my, in, um, in my daily life here. And so I, I collect the eggshells and then I crush them and then I put them around the plants that are most susceptible to being eaten by, uh, by the slugs. And so, yeah, you have to keep, some of these remedies are not permanent. You have to stay on top of it. You got to go out a couple times, you know, like every other day and spritz your plants and look at them. You know, you'll get to learn how, what, what's going on in your garden. You'll see the rhythms of it. Um, you also will see other beneficial, um, uh, animals that will be coming um, or insects that will be helping you with your garden. Um, my, I tend to have, um, horn, sometimes I get hornworms in my tomatoes, but we have um, little Miss Yellow Garden Spider. Miss Spider comes along and she makes these huge, beautiful webs. And uh, when I start seeing her in my, in my tomato patch, I, I'm thrilled because she goes after those worms as well as there's these wasps. So you want to look at your worms. And if they have these little white things, and I'll, I'll pull this up. Let me share my screen um, real quick, and I'll show you. Um, okay. So I'll show you my, what I'm talking about. So this is, it's going to come up. So this is this little hornworm here. See these, uh, these little white, white things. So these are the, ben these are actually going to kill this hornworm in your tomatoes. And that's what you want. So I leave these puppies alone. I don't, uh, I don't try and kill them. So um, the other thing is, and here's our, our little lady, our little lady spider, Miss Yellow Spider. She's, uh, she's another one that, um, they're huge. I find them in my lavender as well. And I just leave them alone. They're absolutely most beautiful uh, spider I've ever seen. And they go after the aphids, um, in wasps, any bug that, um, that tries to, likes to eat your your plants so um let's go back to me oops okay so um so you got eggshells you've got garlic you can do mint mint i you know i've tried it the mint um the mint spray with the um with the tea the oils you want something with an oil now the other thing that i use a lot and it's super simple, is a bug spray. Now, this was a friend of mine. She is a avid gardener, and her name is Betty Lou Sandy. She runs the Spruce Street Community Garden. Um, she, she started many community gardens in the Hartford area. She is an absolute wealth of information. She got me involved with this. Now, this is simple. It's just water. And she recommends lemon scented dishwashing detergent, not antibacterial. Or she buys her cheap lemon scented at the dollar store. So, Anne, if you've got a dollar store out where you are, look for lemon scented uh, non antibacterial dish soap, the cheap stuff. And she puts a drop, just one drop in a spray bottle, which is, you know, your typical, I don't know, is this a quart, a liter? I don't know what this is, a spray bottle. And um, 
And that's what she uses to spray on her plants to deter the moths and the worms. Now, I don't have, because I'm not a shopper and I'm not going to go searching around for lemon scented dishwashing detergent. I use instead, and it works just fine, I use regular dishwashing detergent that I get from the, the store liquid. And then I add about a quarter teaspoon of lemon essential oil to the bottle. And then I shake it up. And then I go and I spray it on um, my plants. Now, I did it on my uh, squashes the other day just after the rain. And I got to go back out today. And I've got to check them. And you, I just, you just keep spraying it. Now, if it gets worse, you got neem oil, neem and oil that you can use. Uh, you can spray on there. But I try not to use any of the commercial um bug spray stuff. I, I really want to stick with the herbs, the oil, the oil, the olive oil infused garlic that has worked well. It plugs the the bodies of the bugs and they end up um, dying. So that's why that works really, really well. Um, anything else? You got any questions, Ann? Yes. I have questions about how much to spray and do you spray? So I have, I have tomato plants and they're forming tomatoes right now. So do I spray on the tomatoes or do I spray the leaves or how much, how many areas do I need to spray? You want to spray the area where the, the damage is occurring. So if the if you got something eating your tomato, you have to figure out whether I mean we have chipmunks that are eating eating the our, our tomatoes and there's really nothing I can do about the chipmunks. I just try and go out there and pick them before they're really really ripe and then I let them finish in in the house. That's a huge um, that's a that's one of the secrets that a lot of the farmers use is um is doing that hang on just a second and i just have to send my my husband a quick text because my daughter's feeding pump is going off hang on okay you still there all right sorry i just had to tell my husband my daughter's feeding pump is going off and he needs to go take care of our daughter so anyway, um, so you want to spray the areas that you are seeing the pests, the damage. Um, you want to make sure that you look under the leaf, not just on top of the leaf, because that's where a lot of these guys hang out is under the leaf. And um, you want to make sure that you spray underneath. Uh, again, if you're seeing big bites out of your tomatoes, that's probably a chipmunk. And these little boogers, man, there's not a lot, I mean, other than terminating their lives, which I don't, I don't recommend. Um, nat nature will have its balance. You know, some uh, other critter will come along um, and and balance out the population. So I, you don't want to mess with the with the natural eco flow of that sort of um, critter. So um, I, if you have that sort of problem, then harvest your tomatoes a little earlier when they're almost ripe but not quite. You take them out and you hang, put them upside down. You just let them finish ripe on your kitchen counter. A lot of farmers, um, in the at least in my experience, we do that in out of the field. We will go out to the field and we will harvest the tomatoes just before ripe, and then we take them to the barn and then we flip them upside down and we let them finish ripening. That's really the only way we can make guarantee that we'll have a crop of tomatoes uh, before the deer and the chipmunks and anybody else who decides to come through. The gophers, gophers are terrible. You know, that's another, that's another critter um, that will do huge damage to your garden. So, um, and gophers, Gophers, we've had problems with gophers, and we've had to hire a trapper to come in and to trap the poor thing 
and move it to a new location. I, I will not agree to have anything exterminated. So uh, we, we will pay. I've had that a couple of times where we had a Mr. and Mrs. Gopher come through and just mow everything down. And so um, it was worth, it was worth the money. <laughs> and I felt better. I could sleep. I didn't want to, I, and I just, I, I don't want to, I don't want to kill anything. Um, so does that answer your question, Anne? Yes. I also have questions about getting rid of uh, wasps because I have this problem in the past and they were forming their nest under my roof in um, several locations so what's the natural way to get rid of them um that let me see i don't know i don't know that answer because that's my husband and sometimes he does use um he does use a repellent a wasp killing repellent um for that a um, lot of times we just end up leaving leaving it there or we'll make sure sometimes we have wasps those paper wasps that will hang their little thing under the art eaves we will um keep an eye out and then we'll knock it down before it gets it, it, i mean it has to be small like a like a a pea or a um when they're starting to get going we'll make sure that they don't get they don't the nest doesn't develop very far and we'll get up there and we'll knock it down with a with a broom or something um once it gets going um i wouldn't i wouldn't do anything i would wait until the till winter and then knock it down um i i wouldn't touch it because it's not worth getting stung um it's at that point it's too late um and if you find them in the tree or someplace they're really um, you know, you're get not getting stung because they will attack you um, is the best. So being vigilant, if you know that that's an area where they tend to build their nests, then be vigilant about knocking it down when they first get started. The more activity outside that area, the better it is and they'll, they'll move on to something else. Does that answer your question? I mean, short of killing it with a uh, with bug spray, which I won't, I don't, I don't do. Yes, that's helpful. Thank you. Okay, so um, we talk about beneficial bugs um, and what you can do to help your garden. Um, sometimes we, you know, we have the ladybugs. Uh, we'll get. You know, unfortunately, in if you're out in the open, um, the ladybugs will will come. You can always buy them online, and then can just dump them in your garden. Um, when I had my greenhouse, it was uh, sealed up. Uh, now I don't. I just leave the sides open during the growing season, and then I'll I'll close it up during the winter. Um, I had ladybugs. I would buy, I bought some ladybugs. And this is when I had the um, the aquaponic system in my in my greenhouse. And you know, for, if you don't know what an aquaponics is, it's it's fish. I had fish living under these rafts, and I was growing plants on top of the water. It is a self-contained system. You don't have to add anything to it. So I had a big tank of goldfish. Um, and then uh, that were um, that were swimming around, and then the water from the fish tank would be filtered through two beds of of shale rock, and then we would uh, pipe the the water that would kind of clean clean the water, and then we would pipe it down to this huge pool where I had my floating rafts, and um, occasionally I would get some kind of um, you know, bugs, aphids. So I would let loose the, uh, the ladybugs. Um, but I don't have that anymore. We, we took it down. So ladybugs, uh, praying mantises. So those are beneficial bugs that you want in your garden that you want to see the yellow garden spider, and then your, your, your soap, your bottle with your dish, 
detergent and your, you know, scent, lemon scent essential oil, and you just go through your garden and you, you'll get a, you know, if you're out there enough, you'll get an idea of the ecosystem and the life cycle of your plants that are growing in the garden. Um, and, and you can, you know, take care of problems before they even get started. And that's the whole point of being, you know, proactive in biodynamic gardening as well as organic gardening. Um, is there any, any other questions? Okay, so we're going to move. Oh, go ahead, Ann. I think for Hannah's sake, she, you might, can you mention that book again that you're referencing? Oh, yes, Hannah, I'm sorry. So I have these, um, this book is called Biodynamics Gar Biodynamic Gardening and it's Grow Healthy Plants and Amazing Produce with the Help of the Moon and Nature Cycles. And, um, Huh. There's no, I don't see the author listed on here, which is bizarre. I'll have links in the show notes. So if you go to my YouTube channel, Hannah, I will have, I'll, I show the picture of the book. I'll have a link uh, for you. Oh, Mont, Monty Walden, W-A-L-D-I-N is the author. Oh, I've had this book. I've used it. It's, 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 te yeah. some of the recipes are a little, a little more technical than um than i like i mean i'm simple i'm a lazy gardener lazy organic gardener i i don't i don't want to be trying to find uh a horns of animals and grinding them up into powders and you know they got they got all kinds of you know stuff i mean i i understand that it works well but um i don't want to go digging around i don't want to go finding that kind of stuff it's not my thing but anyway we can still achieve the same goal by using herbs and essential oils and uh, using olive oil. Um, those are just the simple. So in eggshells and things like that, you can still achieve your same, your same goal. All right, so moving on, composting, organic composting. Now this is another way that you can help your plants. Um, I, I believe in um, not allowing, when I garden, not to have open dirt. Um, I want things to be covered in my garden. So a one of the ways that you can help um, maintain a healthy garden, you know, is by weeding, keep, keeping the weeds down. That way you don't have little bugs coming in and keep camping out in your weeds and choking out your, your vegetables. But I, uh, during the fall, we collect our leaves and we chop them up into a fine mulch. And then I put them on top of my beds for the winter. And then in the spring, I'll just dig holes and then I plant right through the mulch. Um, and so that helps me keep down the work of, of mulch or of, of weeding. Again, I'm a lazy gardener. I'm, I'm trying to find ways to help my uh, cut down on the work. We have, you know, 22 raised, we have a quarter acre of a garden and it's a lot of work. My poor husband, crawls around on his hands and knees for months at a time cleaning out beds. So mulching, mulching helps keep the, the, um, the moisture, helps your plants in the long run, and it helps with keep down the work. So composting is another form of um, that you can add to your mulch when you get going. Now I'm going to show you online. I don't do fancy composting. Again, I am a lazy gardener and um, I'm going to bring up my screen. I'm going to show you my compost and um, my main, our main compost. Um, all right, so our main compost, can you see this okay? Is, um, is a pile in the woods. And you can see all my, uh, my eggshells. You can see I got banana scraps out there. I've got um, my uh, coffee, my coffee um, filters. Um, I use organic coffee filters. And 
I don't worry about turning it over too much because the animals, the possums come out um, at night and they dig around and they kind of do it for me. And then when the bears come through, they really get in there and they dig and they're, they're looking for whatever scraps. They're looking for bugs, the worms. I think there's even some mice living in there, but uh, you know, eventually when I need, what I need, when I need my compost, I'll go through there and I'll dig out on the bottom. But it, it's very informal. I don't have any fancy apparatus or anything like that. I don't have one of those fancy containers. Um, another another uh, compost pile that I have is um, oop, I didn't I didn't share it. Okay, so I have another compost that's in the woods, and that is. Um, has the the stuff from the uh, greenhouse so when i do repotting when i was doing trays of microgreens i'd have these you know i'd do like you know 100 trays a week and i would be dumping the spent garden uh, soil in the back in the pile so i got a mountain of that um back there and that um that gets compost as well so if i need a little more cleaner um, compost. I'll go dig off of that pile. So we have a couple of piles around in the woods that we use. Uh, we're not, we don't have, you know, one of those big bins that spins. I found that they, they don't really work well. So the, another book that I thought was very helpful is this book called Worms Eat My Garbage. And it's about composting. And this is by how to set up a maintain a worm farm. Now you can use a worm farm and a compost pile at the same time. Your worms actually live in your compost pile. But if you, um, worm poop is, is a great, great, um, fertilizer, natural organic fertilizer. And you can actually create your own compost with your worm farm. So if you've got kids, and they're interested in in the you know playing with the with the worms. Um, you can actually sell this at, to local gardeners. You can. There's a lot of guys out there that I've met that actually created a small business using tubs of of worm compost, and they just took their regular compost and they just dumped it into the containers, and then they sifted out the worm poop. And that stuff is like gold, liquid gold. Um, and that would be something that I use in the garden as well. So I would make a compost tea and I would take a burlap sack and a five gallon bucket that I get, you know, those big buckets, five gallon buckets from Home Depot or wherever. And then you fill that up with water and you take a burlap fabric, you take a shovel full and you put it in the burlap, you tie it up and you stick it in your bucket and you let it sit there for a day, two days, uh, 48 hours. Now, if you really want to get crazy and be really into it, you could get a fish pump with a little tube, regular tank, you know, fish pump from you get from your fish store, from your, your aquaponics, or not aquaponics, your fish store, you know, where you buy your little fancy fish, and you can aerate it. And you can stick your little pump in the um, in the bucket, your little tube, and you can have bubbles that come up. And you can aerate your your compost tea for you know forty eight hours, and then you scoop it out, and you you can water your tea, and you have free fertilizer that is healthy. It's great. And then whatever the sludge is left over, either you can recompost it, or what I like to do is that I'll just top dress around the garden um, to keep, you know, just to add extra layer of nutrients to it. Um, the other thing that I use now, the worm farm, I have in my, I have written a book called My Garden Journal, How to Garden for Kids. And in this section, there is a whole, I wrote a whole thing about, worming and how to how to build a worm farm and what to do making the tea i'm just trying to find the page that it's on hey, bear with me so yeah it's on page 40 44 and 45 how to build um how to build the worm farm 
and you know what you need for worm farming lettuce banana peels eggshells coffee grounds you don't want to put meat scraps anything dairy no salty foods no spicy uh, hot peppers none of that kind of stuff and no citrus foods worms do not like citrus um and you just dump that into a container and here's another picture of the container. It's just a regular tote with shredded newspaper. And we picked these worms out of my compost pile and we stuck them into the container. Um, this is, uh, and uh, and they, it worked well. Now you can buy special worms from Amazon. There's, um, I, there's links. I give you the resources in the back of the mag and uh, back of the, of the book. Um, but worms are, are wonderful. You want them in your garden. You want some of these bugs, even though they may not be beneficial bugs like pill bugs. Um, you want them in your garden because that's how you know that your garden is alive. If you're digging in your dirt and there's nothing in there, there's no critters, there's no, there's nobody in there, there's no worms, then you got basically a dead garden. Um, and you need to add organic matter to that garden to make it alive. When you dig through my garden, you take a scoop of soil, you should see things moving in it, whether it be a worm, whether it be a pill bug, whether it be an ant. You want these guys to be living in your garden because that helps with the roots. Obviously, some of them, like cutworms, are not something that you want, but you'll know your plants, if you have a healthy soil, your, your pests will be down to a minimum. You're not gonna have nothing, you know, there should be, there should be something live in your, in your, um, in your soil. Um, years ago when I started farming on another farm uh, land, I was leasing land, I had an acre out there and his soil was dead absolutely dead he had um he was a former tobacco grower and he had nothing in his soil i had sent that soil out to have it analyzed and there was zero organic matter the guy that i had hired to help me re rehabilitate that that plot of land he said in all his years he'd never seen uh, as dead soil as that and by the time i left his property four years later it was live it was thriving and i brought it back to life by doing some of these very things that i talk about um that i'm talking about now by just you know feeding the soil with organic matter it doesn't take a lot it's free uh you don't have it's not in it's inexpensive um, and you know, again, I didn't spend a lot of money. I just leaf matter. I just used, um, the other, oh, the other thing that I have before I forget is comfrey. Now, if you grow in Russian comfrey in your area, you need to be harvesting those leaves and you can actually lay them down on top of your, your soil in the bare spots and let those leaves decompose. Russian comfrey is high in nitrogen. It's a nitrogen fixing in your soil. And so that was one of the things that I did was that I was harvesting the comfrey that I have back in my garden and I was bringing it out to the field and I was um, taking those, lot, mulching up the leaves and putting those in there. So another fertilizer, super simple fertilizer, um, you can make comfrey tea. So I, when I, when my comfrey gets big, let me show you a picture real quick of, um, of the comfrey, my comfrey pile. Um, this is a wonderful nitrogen fixing herb, and um, I harvest it, and uh, I cut, I cut it down. So here you see it's getting tall. So and we had to stake it. Up, it tends to fall, get really big and then fall over. So I'll go through and I'll cut it down and then I'll give it a rough chop. And either I'll put it in a five gallon bucket of water, I'll let it steep for like, a, you know, three, four days, sometimes five, and let it get really fermenty and kind of gross. And then I will take that water and then I will water the plants. And that is a natural organic fertilizer. Um, I got a ton of this stuff, so if you want to get a package of it from me, I'm willing to sell it. I don't have any um, uh, 
rules, gargan or, um, agriculture laws. If you're in the United States, let me know. I'll be cutting this down. I have four beds of this stuff. So um, I'll cut it down and I'll dry it. And then you can use it. You can rehydrate it when you get, uh, when you're ready, but I'll, I'll be adding this to my uh, Thompson street farm com website. Uh, so yeah, Russian comfrey is one of the reasons why I planted it. It's also great for your skin. So I make a uh, gardener salve and I'll take the comfrey and I'll take plantain which is also considered a weed here in Connecticut. And I will infuse olive oil with, with these two plants and I will use it topically. And it's great for bug bites. It's great for mosquito bites. Um, po oh, po poison ivy. Paul got into poison ivy. You should see him. He is a wreck. Um, he's been smearing my uh, gardener's secret salve on there. And it has comfrey and plantain in it. So any questions, I will get rid of this and come back to me. So you have any questions, ladies? Hannah, feel free. If you got any questions, raise your hand. We'll be happy to have you. Um, there you go, my dear. Welcome, welcome. Did it come in? Hello, Brenda. Hi. I have actually been out watering the garden while I've been listening to you. That's why I could <laughs> not come up and speak early. That's fine. Welcome. <laughs> what are you growing um, in your I just garden? To, well, quick, I just wanted to say I made a plantain salve myself, and that has been... I got into some poison oak or ivy or something Ooh. last year, and it really, really helps. It's, like, so amazing. So I just wanted to say that for anybody else uh, who's wondering. Oh, <laughs> I wonderful. I second that. Yeah. Wonderful. Did, um, where did you buy it from? Where did you get it from? Do you get it from me or from somebody I, else? I made it myself. Oh, okay. Good for you. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, and, uh yeah, so I've got uh, a bunch of radishes growing, um, and in that garden, and and some potatoes as well. And in that garden, I have a bunch of uh, milkweed that just grows naturally nice. around there. So we get yeah. lots of amazing pollinators, yeah. which is really fun. Um, and then we've got some chives too that have flowered, and the bees love those yeah. as well. And um, and then I've got a diff a, another garden that's got some rosemary and thyme and lavender and uh, cucumbers. And um, so that one is actually, it's like a, a cube garden. Mm -hmm. And so we have, it's like this big cube and um, on, on the, around the cube are like, plastic um containers mm -hmm. that you plant in and then in the middle of the cube we have a like a garbage a plastic garbage can that we drilled holes in the mm -hmm. bottom and mm -hmm. so it's compost oh, right nice. in the middle nice and then that drains out um some liquid we can put comp to make tea the compost tea um like you were talking mm -hmm. about with the comfrey and um yeah, I actually had a basil plant over there and I went, not today, but last week I went to check on it and uh, there had been, I, I think it was a cutworm that had just been feasting away on oh. my poor little basil plant. Yeah, cutworms are <laughs> terrible. I did, yeah, I did uh, remove him from the garden, <laughs> um, put him out into the woods here. Yeah. and. Um, and uh, giving this poor little basil plant a little extra love and hope that uh, she'll be thriving here soon. Good, good. Now, what's where are you? Are you sound like you're in a warmer climate? I'm no, I'm I'm in Wisconsin. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, Your snow so must have just ended because you're further north than I am. <laughs> <laughs> basically went from winter to summer immediately now it's like you know it was almost a hundred yesterday oh yeah we're gonna be that way this week it's supposed to be hot today 
Yeah. Well, it's good. So you but, have you been able good. to deal with your garden pests effectively? Um, you know, I think for the most part, like you, I think you were saying earlier, it's really about paying attention to mm -hmm. what's going on in the garden. And so, you know, with the basil plant, like I, I saw that something was eating it. I took the time to look under each leaf and find the culprit, mm -hmm. remove it. Um, and now just doing what I can to just care for the plant. But, um, yeah, I think just kind of being active in, in, in the garden each day and, and looking at what's going on, um, is kind of, it's like the preventative measure to before things, you know, things kind of get really bad, you know? Yeah. Um, well, it also helps keep, you know, like the gophers and the bunnies. I mean, even though at night it's, it's, it's fair game. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I, you know, it was a couple of years ago. I had a bunny. Our garden is fenced off because we have deer that come through. So we have a six foot fence and um, I had a bunny who was missing her, her leg somehow or another. She, she oh. got, it, it got, it was missing. She, she had an injury. And um, if you look at some of my old photos on um, either Facebook or uh, Instagram on Thompson Street Farm and uh, Farm to Bath, uh, you'll see a video of her coming up to me. And she had her babies in my garden. I just left them, you know. But when I was out there working, she would she would hop around me. But she didn't eat very much. I mean, you know, I, I just don't have a, a – gophers will we'll trap, we'll get rid of. But bunnies, mm -hmm. I mean, they're not going to eat that much. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we, so we have three dogs here. Mm. Um, so they really help keep uh, there you go. a lot of that stuff away. Um, you know, occasionally at night, uh, we might get a deer walking through or something, but they're kind of always. The dogs are kind of always. Well, that's good. That's a natural so, deterrent. The dogs are great. Yeah. Uh, do you yeah. have turkeys? Do you have problems with turkeys? We do. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I mean, we don't really have problems with them, but we do have a lot of wild turkey that are be that move through. Uh, sometimes they'll kind of go through the yard, but again, with the dogs. Um, they usually move through pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, I like to let the turkeys hang out, especially in the grass, because they eat the ticks. So yes. I don't bother oh them gosh. when they come through. We don't, we don't bother them. We let them, let them graze. I mean, they don't go after um, the lavender or any of the other stuff. No. Um, so I know I, I like to have them hanging, but mm. usually the, you know, the dogs will get it even when they're inside and then they bark and yeah. turkeys get out of here. But, oh my gosh, I know I'd like to, release some turkeys just to eat the ticks <laughs> they are so so bad this year yeah they are aren't they they're terrible oh it's it's been really rough last year was really bad too and uh, last year and this year i mean i don't know if they if, if it's ever been quite as bad as it as it is yeah i don't know if we'll, uh, where, whether it's um the either the winters are not cold enough or we have too much moisture and so they just multiply i, I don't know what the deal is but this year they were all i had problems with ticks they were all over me and that's unusual in our garden and because we have rock and stone and stuff and i was weeding yeah. our onion bed and i stood up and i had ticks all over me I'm like wow yes yeah it's i mean you know we're we're in the middle of the woods, so we do get a lot of ticks, but yeah, even in our yard where, you know, we keep, oh, oh there's a little chipmunk looking at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are, those little guys are boogers, man. They They're like to eat even, my tomatoes. Like, he's just up on the deck with me. He's like not even afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, the dogs are inside right now. <laughs> yes, I would never do. Uh, yeah. Well, great. You have any other questions or comments you'd like to share with us? Well, um, I don't know, I guess, right at the moment. Um, I've, been, I've just been loving listening to all the great tips and advice that you've been 
talking about today. So well, thank appreciate you. Appreciate it, and happy that I was able to catch this. Wonderful. Well, thank you for. We're here every Sunday at ten o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and if you can't, um, if you miss me. Um, then I'm on the replay is on living and loving herbs podcast, YouTube channel. So you can go to YouTube and check out the replay, uh, if you missed us, but if you want to, you know, if you have issues with your garden, I've been, I, I'm a, what they call a micro gardener. I've, I've leased land all over my town. Um, so I've done some, some small scale farming as well as a uh, market gardener. I've, was at the farmer's market for years and years and years. And because of COVID, I'm, I'm now home. I have a child with a disability, which is preventing me from being out in uh, large groups of, of, of people in, in a public setting. So I have to be very careful with, uh, with where, I, where I am because until, until this whole thing blows over. So, uh, but anyway... We are about done. I mean, the other thing is if you, uh, Anne, you said your brother-in-law is, uh, can't have anna or uh, flowers in his yard because of the deer. Lavender is a deer, is deer resistant. So if you've got a lot of deer, I suggest you, uh, and you want flowers, deer, uh, lavender is a great, uh, plant to grow. It's deer resistant. And it's drought resistant. The deer will leave. Will leave it alone. They won't chew on it. So that's another another idea for you. You can share that with your brother. That's a great idea. Thank you for the suggestion. You're welcome. So, ladies, it's eleven oh six. I try and keep this for about an hour. If there's anything else, Teresa, you want to share anything else? Well, thank you for being patient with me being in and out. It was the final day of my son's <laughs> soccer, and I really needed to be present. But I've been listening, and I almost feel like there should be uh, a part two because there were so many times when there was background noise, and I wanted to jump in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, We can I do part two. More. We can do part yeah, two. I want to learn more about um, using leaves uh, around my plants to prevent weeds. Uh, I did not realize that. And I we swim in leaves every year. Yeah. And we throw them in the, in the preserve that's part of our land. Um, and I had uh, so many more questions about composting because it's gone wrong for me. <laughs> oh, come on. Composting is super simple. Don't, don't, the oh. less you think about it, the better. The better off it'll work. I mean, oh. it's it's super. It doesn't have to. I, you know, I get issues with people who really, you know, are so. I had an uncle. He was an engineer, and he had the best composting system. I mean, it was scientifically accurate. I mean, <laughs> he just went over the top. And um, yeah, no, don't 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 think about it too hard. It's it's you know. Your plants will love you for just any any de decomposed product, as long as it's not grass clippings. I have an issue with grass clippings, uh, especially okay. if they well people spray. You know, that will, well my other tip is is that if you get compost from your town landfill, don't because they collect grass clippings and people have this thing about spraying their yards and I don't care whether they say it's organic or not. If the dude who's spraying your yard or dudette is spraying your yard and they're wearing a mask, that's a big hint, it's toxic. And they're putting that stuff on your property. And the birds, the worms, you know, the worms that are in that soil, you got a little little robin that comes along and eats that worm. You just poisoned. That worm is a toxic. It's, it's, it's Chernobyl. It's a Chernobyl worm. And that poor little robin is eating that, that worm. And now you just killed her and the worm. You know, it's just people in your chemicals just... Stop! You're you're killing the wildlife. You're killing the natural um, balance. You know when there's one too much of one thing, then something will come along and take care of it naturally. And we need to stop messing with the uh, 
the this whole thing. I mean, I, I get a lot of chipmunks. I know that the the foxes and the coyotes are going to come through, and they're going to and the bobcats are going to come through, and they're going to you know drop down the population naturally. And I don't have to do a thing. I just know that eventually it'll be taken care of. So it doesn't need me to be interventing in intervening in the uh, in, in this cycle cycle of life, I guess I should say. So anyway. Um, that's my soapbox. I'll get off now. <laughs> oh, we share that soapbox and we should do an episode on it. Um, yes, absolutely. Because I'm one of the few houses on my street that refuses to spray. And just yesterday, somebody came and knocked on my door and, and gave me all the first and last names of my neighbors who are using their product and how I would get a discount if they uh, just came and sprayed for me also. <laughs> yeah, that same and, person came to my yeah. yard too. He came to oh. my door. Shame on you. And I noticed my neighbor across the street hired him. He came back with his truck and was running around. You know, black. we, we have a problem with black ants in the spring. Teresa, I don't know whether you have the same, same problem. You know what I used to? I do. Okay. And so I, I'll share my remedy too. Go for it. Okay, so my remedy is... Baking or a borax soap mixed with peppermint essential oil. So if they're on your kitchen counters, I will run a string of borax and I mix it up with peppermint essential oil, and then I will run it along the edge of my, you know, the backsplash of my of my kitchen counter, and I'll leave it there for about a week and then I'll clean it off. The other thing is that if they're coming in, uh, last year they figured out how to come in through our gas line. We have a propane gas line. And those suckers, I couldn't, I couldn't get to them. So at the entry point, I put um, some of my, I chopped up some of my peppermint sea salt soap. And I just leave it. And they were coming in through the garbage where the garbage we have a a, count, a slide in a garbage container drawer and so i just put a bunch of soap back in the corner and i haven't seen an ant since and it's been a year so what's your remedy my dear wonderful um i'll have to try that one also so my remedy also includes borax and what i'll do is um uh, about a third cup of water and two or three spoons of sugar um, or a big tablespoon of jam or some maple syrup. And those three I do interchangeably because mm -hmm. they end up learning the concoction. Yep. And, the, and then you have to switch up the flavor. Um, but then I'll put um, just... Uh, like a quarter of a teaspoon or, or maybe less, a sixth of a teaspoon of borax in there. So it's really, really super sweet. Mm -hmm. And I'll find the entry point and put it like on the lid to a jar so it's something that's really shallow. Mm -hmm. And they call each other and you can actually, like they will come like they're coming to the banks of a river <laughs> and they will suck up that nectar and it, you can feel the energy of like nirvana. They're calling each other. They, they don't care that you're watching them or taking pictures. I have pictures and they are literally lined up. Some of them drown in the middle of it because oh, wow. they feel like they have found gold and they gorge themselves and then they go back to their colony and they feed this to the rest of the colony and 36 hours your problem is done yeah yeah i also take if it gets really bad that now you liquefy it you add water to it right so i don't i just yes. i just leave it in powder i just um infuse the powder with the peppermint essential oil and i'll just leave it on my counter uh, at the cr the crack of the of the backsplash and i'll just go along um and i'll just leave it there for a week and it usually that's it they're done um but uh, the other thing that I use is Epsom salt. So I'll get a big container of Epsom salt and I'll go around the foundation on the outside of my house and I will lay a layer of Epsom salt around the corner of my foundation and um, I'll just leave it there for, and usually that ends it too. Um, 
you know, for years and years, we did hire somebody to come in and spray. Um, and then finally, the guy, the guy fessed up, he was retiring. And I didn't want to use these big commercial, he was a private guy who, who did this, um, small business guy. Um, and I had no, no desire to hire these big name spray companies. And I'm not going to tell, give them their, their due. Um, because I just felt that with my daughter, I didn't want to even go think about having any more issues, toxic issues with her, with all the chemicals that she has. So she's allergic to, um, so I was going natural and it was him who, who gave me the Epsom salt. And I think it was the biodynamic gardening book that I have. I think they're the ones that I got that, uh, the, uh, the borax and the, uh, essential oil, um, idea from. So yeah, this is a great book. If you have issues, I really highly recommend, and I'll have a link in the show notes for anybody who wants to get it, but they have some really good pest management, but borax. That's a great, great uh, little tip. Borax and sugar. Um, you can liquefy it like Teresa does, or you can just be lazy like I do. And just sometimes I add sugar to it, sometimes I don't. Um, but uh, yeah, and you can save money and not kill your your family or get uh, you know cancer. That's a big thing. You know, um, another soapbox. I'm sorry, but. Uh, any product that use glycosates, you know, Teresa, you're involved in that sort of thing. The ground up people. Yeah, the glyphosate, glyphosate is terrible. Absolutely terrible. And that's what everybody's putting on their lawn. Yeah. And I can start my soapbox about America's love affair with lawns. Uh, but I, I know. won't right now. <laughs> now. Yes. Plant flower beds, people. Get rid of your grass. You're taught. And, you know. If I can just say one thing, those who may question glyphosate because their pushback on the uh, on uh, the the debate has traditionally been um, that glyphosate Roundup is supposedly safe. Uh, start looking up all the lawsuits with um, settlements in favor uh, in favor of the people filing lawsuits against Monsanto's Roundup. So now it's Bear. Monsanto's has been bought out by Bear. Yes. Yeah, yes. no, we were surprised. We have an attorney that is um that we use for our daughter, and he showed up and he announced that he has cancer and he is uh going out. He has a, a lawsuit against Bear. Because um, he he has been a huge roundup, uh, has all their products, um, and he was able to prove uh, without beyond a reasonable doubt that uh, that that's where the cancer came from is is by all this product um, that he's been he's been using for thirty years. I mean, I, I told Paul, don't even don't even think about it. When we first got married, he used that product. And I'm like, get this, get this stuff out of here. Don't even think about using it um, because it's cancer. You want to, you want to die young? Go ahead. Uh, I don't want to, I want to, I need to live till I'm a hundred. That's the goal. A hundred with all my faculties, <laughs> all my body parts, all my the, brain. <laughs> at least the, the ones that allow us to have fun. <laughs> Exactly. You know, I'm halfway there. Come on. Give me my body. Don't give up on me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies. It's been fun. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. And, um, you know, we'll see you again next Sunday. And yes, we will revisit this issue. This is a soapbox of mine. So without further ado, Anne, Teresa, Hannah, you have a wonderful Sunday. And thanks for joining. Thank you, ladies. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Okay. So I just want to say thank you. And today is sponsored by um, 
farmtobath.com. So if you're looking, if you're an avid gardener or you're outside and you like to go camping and hiking, um, I will. I want to show you some of my products that I use. This is my farmer secret. This is a bug and bug and a tick repellent that I I made up. It has five different essential oils. You can find this on farmtobath.com. Uh, it's a it, the bugs hate this stuff. We we use this when we were hiking uh, in all kinds of different um, uh, wet, hot, sweaty, humid, marshy areas. This stuff was great, so I highly recommend this. And then I also comes in a travel travel form if I can get this right on the camera. So it comes in a travel thing and it has a little spritzer. I just happened to put a little dropper bottle on here. And then this is my gardener's balm that I make. Um, this is great for bug bites, um, poison ivy, poison oak. Uh, again, when my husband was uh, cleaning out some of our areas in the back, he got into some poison ivy. He got it all over his arm. So he's been using using this to help with the uh, with the itching and control things, and he's also he also is spraying himself with this as well. Again, the five essential oils that are in this um, helps with the itching and irritation as well. Again, it's all organic. And then, if you really want to go nuts, I have lemongrass soap that I make them. This is infused with lemongrass that I grow in my garden. And you can see I have it in here. And it's also a great exfoliant. So um, I grind up the, the lemongrass and I put it uh, into the soap as well. So this again has essential oil. So if you've got you know, bug bites, poison ivy, um, any other kinds of skin irritants from gardening, this little package will do will do really well for you and help you in that department because we all get it so thank you very much for joining us and if you would like any of my gardening books my garden journal or um this is just the this is the more of the adult version of it which just has the uh the journal pages plus all the resources that I use in my and my gardening and my business. Same with this one here as well. It has all kinds of resources in the back for kids. Um, you can get that on Amazon.com or Kobo, um, Barnes and Noble, any of the stores. These books are available. You can even ask your local bookstore to order your own book. So again, thank you for joining us for Herb Talk Live. And I will see you next Sunday and have a great, great weekend.